Hurricane Lee is determined to hold on to its major hurricane status as the wind shear has been taking a toll on the cyclone over the past day. And so we will be taking a look at the latest coming from the NHC. We'll also be looking at our next active cyclone out there, which is Margo. And there is a tropical wave that has emerged off Africa. Additionally, models are forecasting that we will see development within the coming week or two. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so let's go ahead and kickstart things looking at this uh, general satellite imagery. There we have Lee, a prominent hurricane near the Caribbean. We've got Margo out there, which is trying to sustain itself. Wind shear has been taking a toll on it as well. Near the Cabo Verde Islands, there is a tropical wave and uh, there is a lot of activity over in parts of Western Africa. And speaking of the African continent, Morocco has been affected by an earthquake last night and uh, it struck around some minutes after 11 p.m. local time there. And unfortunately, nearly a thousand lives, if not more than that, have been lost in the phenomenon. And so this is truly a disaster and my thoughts and prayers are with the people who have been affected and families who are grieving the loss of loved ones it's, it's truly a tragedy there and so this is the unfortunate world that we live in with these natural disasters but as we head back to the tropics of course we've got quite a bit going on but we want to take a look at what is going on across the caribbean and surrounding areas so there are some thunderstorms popping up this afternoon parts of the bahamas florida cuba jamaica hispaniola puerto rico even over into central america especially there is some activity not a whole lot happening in the east in terms of rainfall and uh, as we head down to parts of uh, the South Caribbean and Northern South America, we also see quite a bit of activity, especially in the vicinity of parts of Costa Rica and Panama, going to Venezuela, Colombia, and then over in parts of the Guyanas, French Guyana and Suriname, there is a bit of activity moving through some thunderstorms across parts of Guyana earlier that have been migrated to the west, but nothing too crazy happening on a whole. Now, as we take a look at Lee here, we can see it. So it has been struggling over the past day because of some increased wind shear and a re-intensification of the cyclone is expected. It might manage to make it back up to a Cat 4, but it is barely hanging on to Cat 3 status, although... It has been improving a bit through today. Let's see if that shear will continue to take its toll, but it is well offshore and direct impacts in terms of heavy rainfall. Strong winds are not anticipated right now in parts of the Lesser Antilles, the Northeastern Islands. And so as we look at the latest cone forecast as of 5 p.m., here we can see that it is sustaining winds up to 115 miles per hour and accelerating to the west-northwest at 10 miles per hour. And now we can clearly see that turn up to the north, which is the National Hurricane Center is expecting. So the worst of the cyclone should remain offshore, not to be in a problem for anyone. But if you're in Bermuda, the northeastern U.S., even going up to Atlantic Canada, you want to keep watch for future impacts there. But of course, I'll be keeping you guys posted. And then this map here depicts the probability of tropical storm force winds. So as we head to that uh, darker shade of green, heading up to that yellow, orange, red, purple, we have an increase in chance. There we have the percentage down there. So we can see that even though some of these uh, these islands are highlighted, Turks and Caicos Islands, parts of the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, even the Northern Leeward Islands, there is a very low chance, 5 or 10% chance of tropical storm force winds being felt there. So the worst of least should remain offshore, but it is going to be kicking up that surf, so dangerous conditions as it relates to marine activities. And then as we take a look at our next active cyclone now, there, Margo. So Margo is not a problem for anyone right now now and it is uh, it hasn't strengthened since this morning so it has maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour move into the northwest at 9 miles per hour and should gradually strengthen potentially becoming a hurricane as we head into the early part of the new week as i said not a problem for anyone and as i've pointed out yesterday and this morning as well models have been hinting that hey we could see something develop as we head through this week especially go into the latter part of the week and into uh, the following week 
So we're looking at the GFS and Euro Ensemble members and we're starting out with Euro. So there we can see that cluster of members that have picked up on something, a tropical wave emerging from Africa, making its way west and then starting to move on a northwestward track. So Euro Ensemble members are agreeing that this won't come close to the Caribbean. It will be moving west for some time, but then make that turn of missing the basin. Meanwhile, for the GFS Ensemble members, we have more of these members suggesting a westward track of the system and at this point in time it is uncertain with what will happen uh, because we're just so far out but the general consensus is that something is expected nigel which is the next name to be used will probably be out there within a week and a half or so so we'll definitely have to be watching what is uh, going on out there and as a matter of fact tomorrow is the peak day the statistical peak day of the hurricane season so that is september 10th and uh we've got the other half of the hurricane season to go through now but uh, overall we should be seeing some more activity within the coming weeks now as it relates to conditions out there we're looking at the dry air map and we can see that we've got lee and margo uh, not a whole lot of dry air compared to before the vicinity of margo and there we have lee the dryer is not really impacting it is that sheer as i mentioned earlier but if dry air across parts of the caribbean as well and overall we don't have a whole lot of dry air in the main development region especially compared to before we started seeing activity Activity ramp up in late August so earlier in August and July especially there was so much dry air dominating but now we're not really seeing that as it relates to the wind shear there we can see it so this map can be a little bit confusing but those green lines indicate areas of favorable shear meanwhile the yellow means neutral and the red means unfavorable so we can see here that there is some of that unfavorable shear in the vicinity of Lee and there we have Margo as well so that is the huge problem here with these tropical cyclones but let's see what going to be happening over the course of the next several days again margo not a problem for anyone and the worst of lee should remain offshore but there is that threat in terms of a dangerous surf that lee will be generating for parts of the western atlantic and so and in terms of what has happened thus far now that we're at that midpoint well almost there we've seen 14 named storms of which four have become hurricanes and three major hurricanes so our hurricanes were Don, Idalia, Franklin and now uh, we've got Lee and the three major hurricanes the only one that wasn't a major hurricane was Don and the strongest of the season thus far is Lee because it became a cat five hurricane so Again, we've got that next half of the hurricane season to go through. We're well above average in terms of the activity and we're bound to see a couple more storms and hurricanes, potentially more major hurricanes before the season concludes. And as such, I'm here to keep you guys posted on all of this activity that is ongoing. And so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. And I trust and hope that you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments i will respond to you once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be weatherwise